Good evening, everyone. Tonight's class is on debate. We'll get started shortly when students arrive in the class. Looks like we're having a bit of trouble with the link. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Paul. Hi, Sam. How are you? I've got some Russian weather going on outside. <laughs> Do you like it? No. <laughs> Even Russians don't. <laughs> yeah, it's um, 24 hours of snow starting a couple of hours ago. Oh, that's just cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not in so many ways. And then on Tuesday, it's going back up to 7 degrees. Wow. Yeah, freaky climate now. That's true. Hello, everyone. Hello, Simon. Are you guys ready Hello. for debate? No. Excellent. Um, <laughs> hello. But yeah. Hello, Camilla. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm cold. I'm fine. Yeah, so yeah. Are you ready to debate? I don't know. I'm afraid of that. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll get started soon. Don't be afraid. This is just a way to practice your English skills. All right, let me go around okay. the class. I see uh, Daniel just joined us. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Can you hear me? Julio, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you? I'm very well, Julio. I'm glad. I can hear you. Do you remember what our debate topic for tonight is, Julio? No, I don't know, Simon. So uh -oh. sorry. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'll try to do my best. Okay. Daniel, hello. Yeah. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Where are you from, sir? Well, you know where I'm from. I'm from Uruguay, in South America. Yes, but my memory's bad, so I keep asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Rene laughs Uruguay. because he knows it's bad or it's good. There's no in between. Okay. All right. Well, tonight's debate class, do you remember what the debate topic is, Daniel? No, I really don't remember because because I... Let, let me see here, perhaps, argumentation and debate of what? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if Natasha remembers. Yes, I remember. It's about the... Violent video games. Oh, video, video oh. games. Now I remember. Oh yeah, now you remember. Yeah. <laughs> yes, me too. Contribute to youth violence, and these are youth between the ages of five and seventeen. Hello, Oliver. Hi, Simon. It's been a long time. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver was in my last class. And I was just talking to Paul from the lovely, warm, tropical country of Russia. <laughs> and we have Rene. Hello, Rene. What's up, Simon? Who are you? I'm cold. I just <laughs> shoveled my driveway. Oh. Can we see how this how looks the snow? It is amount, a uh, really big amount. Not snow. right now. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> it's just uh, about two inches right now. 
Where is the snow, Simon? It's the white okay. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I don't know what it looks like in Russia, but in Canada, snow is white. In Russia, it's red. Keep in mind, like I said, this Are is only Are you Canadian? Uh, no way. I'm not Canadian, eh? <laughs> <laughs> No offense. Eh, none taken, eh? <laughs> I am a dual citizen of two countries, Britain and Cana Canada. 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 One, it rains all the time. The other, it's snowy and cold in the winter and bitterly hot in the summer. <laughs> so very nice place to live. It's wonderful, yes. <laughs> It is one of the most boring places in the world, which usually means it's pretty safe. Boring is good. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, we've got lots of wood, gold, nickel, you know, the stuff the world needs to make things. We actually have stuff that China wants to buy. So, kind of like Russia, we're both very big resource countries. Russia and Canada are very similar. Both are big, both have lots of minerals, both are very hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Yeah, stupid climate. Ooh, that white snow, darn it! <laughs> and I see a gentleman beside me and I, I'm not very good at reading uh, Chinese. Yep, that's what? Chinese. Uh, hello? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a Chinese. I know I could read by the characters. I just didn't know what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> what is your name, please? What was uh, my, my name or... Sorry, I don't... What is your name? My, uh, my name is Chen Zhaojie. Chen Zhao. Uh, Jie. Chen Jiao Jie. Yeah. Ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to class. Okay. We're going to debate today. Yeah. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about theory. Oh, uh, Daniel, no, I couldn't spell his name. I can just Chen Jiao Jie. I can say it, but I can't spell it. But, but he can. Oh, he can. Yes, I'm, I, I would hope he can. Characters. Yes, well, in Chinese, it's it's certainly spelled out. But, but in Latin characters, how it is? You, you need a nickname. Chen. Ha. <laughs> oh, well, like that's that. not what you were looking for. Oh. Chen Ha. I understood that. Well, it's difficult. Yes. Well, Chan guys. Chan Chui Ah, it's Chan Chui Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, we could have fun with names, <laughs> but I know you're just trying to get away from. Yeah. The better the debate. Yes. <laughs> get away from debate. So. Renee, yeah, let's stop typing <laughs> and let's start focusing on video game. Uh, video games contribute to youth violence. And when we mean youths, we're talking about ages 5 to 17. Now, when we have a debate, we have an affirmative. And the affirmative team says, yes, video games do contribute to youth violence. Can I choose team? Sure, what team would you like to be on? Negative. Okay, you can be on the affirmative then. <laughs> no! <laughs> you don't know Simon, right? 
<laughs> you have to be able to be on both teams. So we got yeah, the affirmative and the negative. Okay. What I'm going to do is split the team into two. Affirmative will be Camilla, Daniel, Julio, uh -huh. and Natasha. Perfect. We've got some smiles. That's my first debate. I, I don't know what to do. Well, don't worry. We're going to have fun. Okay. What is the main purpose of my debate class, Renee? Uh, I'm sorry. What is the... the, the what is the, the main the... purpose of my debate class? Oh. In this case, we can manage both sides in the debate and we have to be able to change the, the team. <laughs> right. Most importantly though, I want you to practice speaking and listening in English. That's the main thing. Don't worry if you are not very good at debating. You're not going to be if this is your first class. Don't try to. Just try to have a good argument. And okay. I promise you, if you keep coming back, you'll be as good as Renee, who's been doing this for five months now. Okay. All right. So, Renee is correct. Affirmative must defend its resolution that video game video games contribute to youth violence, ages 5 to 17. The negative will ha try to, well, we'll argue against that. Yeah. We'll ask questions. Well, what do you mean by contribute? What do you mean by youth violence? Okay. And affirmative, you're just supposed to, if they ask you, what do you mean by contribute? You guys get to control and own this. What do you mean by contribute? You can say, hey, 2%. 1%, you could say, when we say contributes, it adds to violence. You get to define. What do we mean by youth? Well, ages 5 to 17. Boys or girls? Well, affirmative. You guys can decide that. Has anybody on Team Affirmative debated before? No, this will be my, my first time. Paul? First time. Thank you. First Paul? time. I, w I think you would love to be on Team Affirmative, too. Simon, I okay. have a question. Yes. The negative side have only boys? That That's allowed. But women is better. <laughs> Okay, well, in that case, then, uh, Paul, you can stay on Team Negative. Okay, roger that. Now, are you just saying you want to have it girls against boys? That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Would you like girls against boys? <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a challenge. We have to no. argue... No. Uh, if we are uh, if we agree or not agree with that no the main thing okay. is is that you understand what we're going to debate and here's what's going to happen when we start each team needs to come up with an opening statement on the affirmative you will say you will state your resolution that video games contribute to youth violence in the ages of 5 to 17. You will tell us why that is the case. So you'll need to do a bit of research. You'll have about 20 minutes to use Google, Wiki, whatever you like to come up with information. Yeah. Same with the team negative. You will have time to research as well. And you will also need an opening statement. I want it. Okay, Oliver, you can do the opening statement for Team Negative. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Google Drive. Yeah.
and I've got a couple of documents that will allow you guys to practice. Just bear with me as I set this up. So everyone should have access now. So if you're on team if you're on team affirmative, you go into team 1. Okay. Team 1. So I'm setting up the document for team affirmative, which is team 1. And now for team negative. Oh, I gotta share the settings out again. So let me share out this document as well. Change so anybody with a link can access it. Yes. Okay, good. So now Team Negative has access too. Where it says Team Members, please go ahead and type your name. Because I want to know who is on which team. In what team I am? <laughs> who is I? Me. Renee, what team do you want to be on? Yeah. <laughs> um, team negative. negative. <laughs> right. So, Chin Chu Chu, you're on team negative. Renee, team negative. Paul, team negative. And Oliver, team negative. Then we have the girls Natasha, Julio, well, not all girls, Julio, Danielle, and Camilla. Okay. So you have. We are the affirmative. Yes, you are. So uh, okay. You, now, what you need to do is research. So go on the internet, go to Google. Yeah. And search about video games cause violence. Okay. Okay. Remember, this is a title, or this is a topic that you could argue either way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a column in each document and call it research. And as I find information, I'll paste it there. <laughs> So I will help you guys. Remember, you need to be thinking about your opening statement. So you've got about 11 minutes to find facts. So what's really important, Team Affirmative, they're probably going to ask you, what do you mean by contribute? So you guys need to think about that. What part of China are you from? Uh, um, uh, do, do, do you know the capital city of China? Oh, um, I know a few cities. Um, 
There's Beijing. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not living in Beijing, but my city is not far from Beijing. Yeah. North or uh, south? South. Oh, south. Okay, I, I know it's... Yeah, because yeah, south and to the coast you have Shanghai. To the north you have Shenyang. Uh, uh, do, 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 you know, do you know Beijing, the Beijing's location? I know it's a location. It's in the northeast, but not very far north. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the city I lived in, in the south of Beijing, uh, when, when, when you go to Beijing by, by train, Mm -hmm. It it takes about four hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I pr I'll probably go to Beijing this fall. Wow. Okay, guys, you got about nine more minutes. Team Affirmative, you really need to think who's going to do your opening statement. Okay. This is very important. So yeah, write out your thoughts. This is really good. I like what you're doing. Who, who deleted? Somebody did some deleting. I understand. I have to do that. Have to do what? To, to write. Do you know a lot about video games and youth violence? No, I'm, I'm searching. That's right. So I would write it out so that way you can share and talk to your team members. Because you okay. guys need to work together. You don't want to talk out loud because you'll give away what you're doing, but in your document you can all talk and work together. Okay. So there's a few ideas that I'm jotting down. And Team Affirmative will go first. Affirmative always goes first. Well, Renee, it's their resolution. Remember the new topics we introduced on Monday about resolution and how Team Affirmative, they own the resolution. Oh, yeah. It's up to them to define what contribute means and what violence means, for example. You can argue and say they're wrong. You can argue and say that and help try to change the definition of violence. Uh oh, hope Simon doesn't see what. Oh man. Nothing. I don't know, really. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right, someone's getting banned. <laughs> wow, Team Negative, you've got a lot of research. Very good. Hmm, this is interesting. I'm going to give this bit of research. 
to Team Affirmative. I'm going to paste a link. You might want to look at this one. And I'll give you one other. Okay, in five more minutes, we'll take a break. Renee, do you play video games? A lot. Have you killed anybody? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Well, well, the, the flies, the mosquitoes, spiders. Ah, so it does lead to violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and remember, contribute, violence. Just pushing your brother down on the couch, contribute as violence. Does shouting at somebody contribute to violence, or is it violent? that lead to violence. Punching somebody. You've got to define what violence is and what we mean by contribute. And guys, Andrea and others from the lobby are helping out too where they can pasting links. Andrea, if you want, you can type out information, too, to help them. Four more minutes, and we'll take a short break. Another good thing about debate is it has you practice public speaking, a very, very valuable skill that most people run away from. If you are good or even okay at public speaking, it can open doors for you. You might even become a teacher, project manager, get into communications or marketing. You're welcome, Andrea. Okay, Paulina put a very interesting fact. What is that? Somebody's got an alarm or a bird? It's a guard. Oh. Sorry. Okay, guys, if you want to stop research for a minute, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. Yeah, let's talk. Okay. So, we're going to start a debate in seven minutes. What I need to know is who on the affirmative side would like to do the opening statement. Uh, I have a, a, a text um, that I, I can read. Uh, <laughs> Would you like to do it, Julio? Yes. It, it, okay. My colleagues are agreeing with me. So Julio will do the opening statement for the affirmative and Oliver for the negative. So what you might want to do for the next five minutes is fine-tune what you're going to say. Julio, you must introduce the topic, which is video games, contribute to youth violence. Okay. It's very important that you introduce your resolution. 
when you start off, it's always good to say, honored guests, my opponents, we are here today to debate the resolution, video game, video games contribute to youth violence. Okay. So you have five more minutes and then we will start. Paul, Renee, and those who aren't speaking. When the other team is speaking, you should be taking down notes because after we've heard both opening statements, I'll get a volunteer from each team to refute what the other team has said. This is your rebuttal. Now, Paul, kill each other, no mercy. Come on. <laughs> this is not war. It's just debate. This is just oh, war. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're entitled to wound your opponent, not kill. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's it's so much violence on the on that the video games. <laughs> so maybe you want to kill your opponent. Well, you don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just joking. Paul plays a lot of video games, and that's where he gets his violent tendencies. No, yeah. I've got I, Linux. I, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. Okay. By the, by the heat, the GTA. Now it's really important here. The whole purpose of this class is not to win the debate. I mean that's what you eventually want to do but it really is to get you used to speaking, practicing your English. De this is a very tough class because you have to think in English, listen in English, speak in English, you're debating in English. You're using all the skills you've learned. And that's so, why this class is very, very helpful for improving your English. So while you might be nervous, don't be. So, I know that's hard to say, but I just want you to just relax, have fun. So, yes. who started? Well, it's not time yet. <clears throat> Julio will start okay. in three minutes. So I will keep loading my arsenal. Yeah, just keep preparing, working, relaxing. In fact, when you do speak in front of others, if you speak more slowly, you'll generally become more relaxed. The best way to be more relaxed when you're speaking too is to know what you're talking about. Here it's tough because you only have about 15 minutes to do research. I can only do so much in a one hour class. <laughs> That's why we didn't just jump right into debating because I know you need to look up some information. So by practicing, by researching, you'll become better speakers. I used to love debate in school. I found it fun. I hope you guys do enjoy this and have fun. I do recommend, even if you have a rough start today, to come to my debate classes. The more you attend, the better you'll become and the quicker you'll improve your English skills, especially when it comes to speaking and listening. Hey, okay. Know, Simon, if it's uh, normal, in school in Canada or England to have debate teams. Here in Uruguay uh, it's not common. Uh, I didn't have ever in my school life a uh, debate uh, about anything. It's, it's rare unless you go to college or university. Okay, you don't do it much in grammar school. I just find it fun. It's a great way to share ideas. Yes, now, 
we're going to get started and Julio I'm going to have you start but one thing it's very important guys be respectful don't interrupt the other person and no throwing mud Julio are you ready I'm ready Simon. okay Julio take as much time as you need you may start okay uh, my guest we are here to debate if video games are contributing or not to violence. As part of the affirmative team, I will provide you with our opening, our opinion. Uh, what contributes to real-life violence is the process of the desensitization and detachment. Repetitive uh, viewing or participation in violence video game in violent video games can easily translate to acts of violence in real life. Media in many, uh, in many forms contributes by presenting situations of aggre aggression and violence in both repetitive visual and acts. A viewer or participant who is continuously engaged and constantly, constantly exposed to repeated uh, scenes involving violence become desensitized, desensitized to the very act of violence in, in, material, in material being present. In terms of this desensitization, violent, me violent media in a, in a passive way has similar effects as those in military desensitization the sensitation training. The majority of violent video games players will not act out in the extreme sense of taking a real life or causing physical injury to, to another. So, however, in my opinion, that is not the most immediate problem with prolonged exposure to violence in games. The issue I believe is the higher risk is the deterioration of respect for life, one's own, one's own, own and others, and with this he, he, the compromise of values. Julio, <clears throat> I think everybody here will agree with me when I say that was an excellent opening statement. Okay, thank you, Simon. I think you did a terrific job. What do you think, Renee and Team Negative? How was that? I apologize for my, my pronunciation. Perfect. <laughs> well done. No, very well done. I, I'm quite impressed. Did you prepare that outside of class, or did you do that today? No, the, today in class. Very. That's very impressive. Okay. Oliver, it is your turn. Julio scored 10 well-earned points. Oliver, if you could go ahead, please. Sure. Well, it's, uh, it seemed that he was reading some text from the Internet. Um, well, no, I, oh, hold on, Oliver. It, it I am... Um, I, I see some similar text. Oh, but, did you? Okay. But, well, but we don't it's, want it's, to attack well, the person, though. Yeah, <laughs> but no, no matter. But uh, it's quite uh, hard to understand it sometimes because the it's so it was so concentrated in read and now to say the word clearly. But I get the idea, and certainly. There are some scientific studies to say. Sorry, there's a lot of noise. Let me just mute Camilla for a minute. Sorry, Camilla. There you go. Um, but maybe we have ten, hundred, thousand of of scientific research, and if you so. If you see the entire picture, well, some say one thing, some say other. 
and there is no really um, an agreement in the scientific community about that. So I could say for now that it's really not a link between the violence and the video games in the teenagers. Okay, good. Now, Oliver, one thing I would recommend when you're doing an opening statement, you don't want to directly attack a the speaker. I know that I am not attacking. What you want to do is because this is where in the opening statement you want to deliver as many facts as you can. So that was good about talking about different cases, how there can be so much research. But what you want to do is specifically talk about research. So for example, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to speak to you about video games contribute to youth violence ages 5 to 17. My honorable opponents would have you believe that video games do contribute to youth violence. That is their resolution. We, however, disagree. We do not believe and go into details why it doesn't. So let me ask you, Oliver, why do you believe, as somebody on Team Negative, that video games do not contribute to youth violence? What's an example? Well, you know, almost every kid plays video games. Mm -hmm. Say like ninety percent of the kids, the, the male kids, and maybe forty percent of the female kids played a lot of video games. Okay, so that's interesting. It's but, a fact, yeah. Yeah, it's a fact. But if you if you see the the statisticals, the about violent crimes of this kind of people between five and eighteen or seventeen years you see a reduction of the violence, no an increase. Okay, good. See, that's a perfect example of what is good to bring into your opening statement, Oliver. Well, I have to um, keep it for later. Uh, later, yeah. Well, keep in mind that when you're doing a debate, you really don't want to introduce new information later no. on. You want to in your opening statement, introduce as much information as you can and then further back it up later on. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, for Team Affirmative, who would like to refute what Oliver said? Yes, Camilla, I see you with your hand up. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, um, to refute, you don't have to refu refute everything he says, but maybe try refute one point. And if you have any facts, great, but just think of one point that Oliver mentioned that you can refute. We know that kids don't have uh, your, own, your own opinion, and uh, they have involved uh, physicolo phys physicologically and emotionally with the video games and uh, we have very and very events that uh, ver uh, much events that uh, contact contact the violence uh, so I don't think that every games can can be bad but uh, they we can say a lot of them that can that can that have historical of it like uh, Doom and uh, Call of Duty, that's some examples in Warcraft. Thank you. Now, Camilla, how do you oh. feel? How do you feel now that you've given your rebuttal? Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> I, I, I know, but you know what? You did well. Oh, thank you. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And you know what? When you start to win a debate, it's a great feeling. It really is. So this is your first debate class. Uh, now, Renee, you've been in many of my debate classes. Uh, 
debate class, game class, your best class, where does debate fit? Besides the memory class, for me, it's <laughs> debate. And why do you like debate so much? Oh, because um, it is some. Um, you have to speak clearly. You have to be concentrate. You have to research. You have to control uh, that everyone is listening to you and control your your feelings. <laughs> yes, your emotions. Yeah. yeah. It's a challenge, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah, and everybody's always got somebody to debate with. So, Camilla, keep at it. Great first start. Who would like to refute what Camilla said for Team Negative? I actually would like, but I can understand what she said. So, if you could summarize, no. I would appreciate it. Actually, Oliver, you've already spoken, so we need somebody else on your team. I'm going to volunteer Renee, not Renee, um, Paul. What? Negative or affirmative? Negative. Oh, this, no, you, you cannot, <laughs> you can't argue against your own team, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. So Paul's going to refute what Camilla said. Paul, go ahead. Uh, Simon, I'm just a little bit confused. Uh, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to have a uh, pros or cons? I think it's cons, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but it's really interesting. You sounded like John Wayne there. <laughs> well, let me tell you, Pingram. I'm not sure what I'm going to debate. I can't do John Wayne. I used to be able to. So you're on Team Negative. So when I say refute, what does refute mean, anybody? To go against yeah. an opinion. To contradict. Yeah. Yeah. So when I say you need to refute what Camilla said, you kind of need to argue against her, to contradict her. She but, made some good points. But could you summarize what she said? No, you've got to pay attention. <laughs> but I, 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 I pay attention, but I didn't understand her. You that, need to that's, do your listening. Yeah, and that's one of the things at debate class is you've got to fine-tune your listening because he, here's the thing. Even if you were to live in the U.S. and learn to speak well, or even Canada, there are a lot of non-native speakers that live here too. So you have to get used to hearing other accents speak English. So, Paul, go ahead, please. Okay. That is true that many games have the elements of violent cruelty and strong language. Also, they may bring violence to the real life, but all of these games are made with PG mark. It means that 20 years old kid would not be able to buy PG 18 game in the store. If you have ability to shoot in the people in the game, it doesn't mean that you have to do it in real life. Actually, you won't. First, mentally people control their acts, control their thoughts and their emotions. If one insane killed 20 people using gun, it doesn't mean that everyone who has a gun would use it. Second, in every game, your crime is followed by punishment. And the majority of all games are devoted to the SWAT team or police squads who struggle against the terrorists of, or villains. They, these games, teach kids what the justice is. And they know exactly who are the bad guys and that the bad guys would be punished eventually. And only very small amount of games are really immoral and should be banned. A 2004 U.S. Secret Service review of previous school-based attacks found that one-eighth of attackers exhibited an interest in violent video games, 
it's less than the rate of interest attackers showed in violent movies, books, and violence in, the all, in their own writings. The report did not find a relationship between playing violent video games and school shootings. I'm done. Thank you very much. Very, clear, very clearly thought out, well articulated. And that's what a debate is. It's using your research to clearly speak. Now, Paul Camilla has debated lots before as well. Danielle, Paul is very experienced in this class in debating. So Paul is practicing some advanced techniques, such as speaking slowly. Yeah. Pausing effectively. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Now, I'd like to try something different. I would like a volunteer from the class yeah. to try and debate me. <laughs> now, I, I would like. A, oh, that's interesting because I, I, there's one person who's being very quiet. Renee. Quiet. Renee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Renee hasn't gone yet. <laughs> Why well, always be He's waiting for this moment? Well, I pick on Renee because he is such an advanced English speaker that I want to give him a bit more of a challenge. So, Renee, honestly, do you, would you like to try affirmative or negative? Uh, negative, please. <laughs> okay, you can be on the negative. Woo! So, I will try the affirmative. I haven't done any research. I'll do a quick opening statement, and let's just try to go back and forth, Renee. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, my opposing debate team. We are here today to debate the resolution. Video games contribute to youth violence for children between the ages of 5 and 17. I'm not going to tell you that all video games are bad. They are not. I'm not going to tell you that if you play video games, you're going to go out and kill somebody, shoot somebody, or put somebody in the hospital. What I'm going to tell you is that video games do contribute to violence, especially among young boys. In fact, studies have shown that after playing video games such as Call of Duty, Gears of War, or Doom, boys show elevated testosterone levels and are more violent in play Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Let's go, Renee. We are with you. And it's, a, it's an easy one. Go yeah, ahead, right. Renee, use okay. your lightsaber. It's a pleasure having you in my, t my team. Stop stalling. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, I think it is clear that the big fears Vended about in press that violent video games make children significantly more violent in the real world. That children engage in the illegal, immoral, sexiest, and violent acts they see in some of these games are not supported by a current research, at least in such a simplistic form. That should make that uh, makes sense to anyone who thinks about it. About it, after all, millions of children uh, and uh, children and adults play these games. Yet the world is not uh, being reduced to chaos and anarchy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renee. Okay. Um, you just said that the world has not been reduced to anarchy and destruction. Correct? Yes. Are you aware that there's several wars in Africa? That there are many conflicts in Africa, the Middle East? Yes. And other parts of the world? Yes. Where do you think this violence comes from, Rene? I think it's from the people. Okay. But from what? What, what creates violence? 
the, sometimes for me, uh, the hunger. The, hunger? Yes. Okay. The poor condition of living. Poor condition of living? The, the unfair life that, he ha that they had. Interesting, because Karl Marx, when he put forward his manifesto, clearly showed that it is the hunger, the poor, those who are treated poorly, that are not the ones to raise up and fight. In fact, it is generally the middle class. And there are many things that lead to power. violence. Well, I, I wish to... Uh, I am not to finished. I am not finished. Sorry. Thank Sorry. you. There are many things that lead to violence. Games. Military exercises. Normal day-to-day -day activities. In fact, video games are no different in terms of forms of play such as board games or running, playing tag, soccer, football, hockey. These all contribute to violence. It's a natural part of human activity. When we compete, we become aggressive. And sometimes when we become aggressive, we become violent. Video games are no different than other forms of activity that we engage in that create aggressiveness. And as it is no different, just as they contribute to violence, so do video games. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> I, think, I just I think. came up with that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was losing and I was trying to find a topic. So, hey, please go ahead. Okay, yeah, if it's, if it's very, very true, doomed. I think, yeah, you said that the people are violent for other things, like, for example, the military uh, exercises and another thing, because I think the, vi the video games are clearly separated, uh, separating the life, the real life, and the virtual life. If you uh, can kill someone in a game, it only shows your ability with your fingers, not with your sight, because if you have to handle a weapon, you have to be strong, you have to uh, have a lot of training, you have to uh, know your weapon, and most of the time, uh, that means that this is a lot of training time wasted in um, just to uh, be just to let you know that you are a real soldier and if you're playing in your house you're at uh, your sofa just moving your fingers and when you turn off your game you clearly know that the guns, the people that you were killing are in the TV and you just go to a bar and have a, a nice uh, night even if you carry a gun you cannot handle that. Thank you very much. Well thank you very much. Uh, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear sometimes I don't hear well but you're saying there's a clear separation between playing an electronic or video game with our hands and killing people in real life in, in a military setting for example correct yeah, yes I, I okay have something to well say please yes. it's very yeah. important that when you're debating you do not interrupt the person when they're speaking I'll give you a chance <laughs> in a sec Oliver okay <laughs> so my honorable opponent has said that there she, she is no correlation between video games and actually real military exercise where people do kill people and they know there's a consequence. Renee, are you familiar with US drone planes? Yes. Uh, are these manned or unmanned? Unmanned. <laughs> They're unmanned. How are they controlled, Renee? With a uh, remote a joystick, correct? Yeah, a joystick. Yeah, so they're so in a sense, 
a pilot's using a joystick and a computer, much like a video game, to control and fly this drone, right? Yes. Do these drones have missiles attached to them? Yes. Yeah. And can the remote operator, using the video game control, fire that missile to kill people? Yeah. So it would appear then that there is no separation between playing video games and actually really killing people. And there's a reason for this. Video games teach. They train. They train people on how to do something. In fact, in the United States, before 